This video covers the repair of an aluminum telescoping whisker pole. Hi, my name's Andy and I love learning about and working on boats. It saves a few bucks, but I think it's this process for some of us that makes sailing so satisfying. Now when sailing downwind, whisker poles are great for controlling the head sail. They extend the clue of the head sail out so it catches more wind. There are already some great videos out on YouTube that show how to deploy and use these poles, but there don't seem to be any that show how to repair them. So I hope what follows provides some useful and valuable information and even might help encourage some of you to fix your own pole. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below as we go step by step through the repair process. As you disassemble the whisker pole, you'll note it's several components. Here's a schematic that's available online and would be good for you to reference. The first step of disassembly is to remove the end fittings. They're riveted on with three or four rivets each and using a drill press to drill out the tops of the rivets and being careful not to drill down too far into the actual aluminum tube. Getting the last one here. Now using just a regular flathead screwdriver to pop open the uh, that eye for the control line. The rivets are at an angle, so uh, so I have to pry it off. Now I'm using a punch to uh, knock the rest of the rivet down into the tube, uh, getting it all the way through the casting. So we have to do that with each one, and you'll see the. The other ends of the rivets uh, will come out when we extract the, the casting from the end of the tube. There it comes, and you can see all the corrosion in there, uh, just between the cast aluminum and the extruded aluminum. aluminum. And those are the, the four uh, internal parts of the rivets. And I'll just clean off some of this corrosion uh, to make it easier to fit the casting back on when we reassemble later. Speeding this up a little bit. And I'm just using a, a makeshift uh, wire wheel uh, on my ben workbench. Alright, now we're able to pull the uh, internal um, strut out. Uh, many of you may not realize, but this is sort of the, the magic that makes the uh, control line mechanism possible. Uh, small diameter strut inside. And once that's out of the way, we can uh, get the two tubes separated. Mine was uh, really corroded and, and uh, didn't want to move. But there we got it apart. You can see the uh, extensive corrosion there, and I think that's from the, the end of the control line um, and the dissimilar metal. I think the control line holds uh, salt water, and with the salt water, it's, uh, some sort of galvanic potential between the stainless steel eye, which is inside there, it's hard to see, but stainless steel eye and then the uh, aluminum tube. So we're using the punch again to knock that high out that just fell on the floor um, and that's that's it you can see the rivets are still still in there so I'll have to knock those out uh, and there's a plastic uh, bushing just trying to knock that that loose my bushing had a one of them had a yeah this one that I was able to take take off had a small crack in it but these would be difficult to machine um, there's a, a lip on one end and so given the uh, corrosion on the end of my uh, tube here I decided I'd cut a couple inches off each tube shorten the whole pole by a few inches um, but I think it would be structurally much more sound this way so you may not have to uh, take this step but if you do um, it's pretty simple just to cut it off and shorten everything. Uh, unfortunately, I left my um, 
grinder with a cutoff wheel uh, in the truck or something. So I'm sort of making do with a Dremel tool and hacksaw. And just sanding it smooth here. Uh, making sure the, the edges of the tube are smooth, rounded. The uh, wide masking tape works really well to make sure you're making a true uh, cut perpendicular to the tube. And it's helpful to have a bench vise. Um, I had two. I have two on my workbench, one like this and then one sort of on the side. And I use both of them. Um, sort of like having an extra set of hands. Uh, but for something like this, I don't see any other way. And I always, always clean this, uh, clean the parts off so they're ready to be reassembled later. And it's good, uh, good way to check and make sure there's no uh, defects in each component. Now here I'm a little embarrassed. I mis, uh, misaligned the drill and the chuck and so I'm trying to fix it. And just making matters worse here. So turning the drill back on before I even had the, the key out of the chuck. So I drilled the first one, um, first hole, and then I'm going to use one of the rivets. Um, and these are aluminum rivets. I'm using one of the rivets to hold the, uh, the end piece on the tube in the right uh, position while I drill the second hole. That way both holes are, are lined up with one another. And you can see how the rivets are going to pass through the, the casting, through the tube and the casting. And we'll install these later, but I wanted to get the, uh, the new holes drilled. And then I'm adding a uh, uh, sort of a, a normal uh, horned cleat. Uh, originally they came, these uh, holes came with a sort of like jam cleat. Uh, it doesn't work as well. And mine had ripped off. I didn't even have one when I acquired the pole. But I'm drilling out the, the holes in the cleat a little bit. I'm using some bigger stainless steel hardware. I need to accommodate the diameter of the hardware. And I'm going to be threading uh, they're screwing these uh, this cleat down, so I'm cutting threads there with a tap. And now I'm reinstalling the control line. Uh, I actually replaced mine. Uh, the original control line was in really bad shape, so it's a good time to replace it. tubes are ready and the control line is in place and we'll nest these tubes together before riveting the end caps on. Uh, they need to go in from the right direction inside one another. And a little bit of electrical tape is helpful to temporarily secure the control line while threading the strut into the next size tube. It's important to keep the control line's orientation um, uh, straight. You don't want to you don't want to get the line twisted so that every time you extend or retract the pole, the, the control line that has a bunch of wraps. So make sure it goes in straight. And it takes a little bit of effort to get the ends of the lines back out through the other end. I'm using a, an old coat hanger and got the, the short end through there and just need to get the rest of it through and uh, pull it all through the other end here. I'm just making a hook with my coat hanger. Here it comes. And just pull it all the way through.
And here I'm, I'm taking the strut back out just to verify that I didn't turn it inadvertently. Just making sure it's going in straight. I really want to keep the control lines working in straight, straight lines uh, through all the sections of tube. So originally the you're gonna have a stopper knot here and uh, here's like what a normal stopper knot would look like, a proper stopper knot, but it's a little too big for inside the pole, so just taking a, you know a single turn around there and it should do the job, especially once we do the you know the uh, the melting of the end. It, I don't think I'll have any uh, any chance of of pulling out. I'm using a little map gas to quickly burn the end of the rope. And then feeding it back up against that eye to hold it in place. So we've got the strut and the control line in the smaller pipe. And then we gotta put this whole unit into the bigger pipe. And it has to go in Basically, you're feeding this one in without its um, casting on from that end, the casting end, into the big pipe at its casting end. We've got the inner bushing at this end of the big pipe and this bushing on the outside of the little pipe. So that's the way it's gotta go. Gonna rivet the big casting onto this uh, little strut. We've got the two holes here, so we just gotta line it up. And I just like getting that one in just so everything's aligned. And a second one. And I'll feed the control line all the way through. And you're trying to do this without having the rope too twisted. Now we're pulling the control line through and as I pull it through it's extending the pole, it's telescoping the pole out. Sort of holding the, the casting in, the big casting in, so it doesn't slide out. And then I'm gonna retract the pole. And it's gonna take the control line in And now we're ready to rivet the end fittings back on each end of the, the tubes. It usually takes about three squeezes and uh, then the rivet pops. Good idea to use two rivets uh, to hold the, the tube and the casting in alignment uh, before uh, setting your first rivet. Now we're ready to attach the cleat. And you can see I've countersunk the, the holes in the cleat to accommodate a slightly larger piece of hardware. I'm gonna use some TEF gel. And what this does is it isolates the dissimilar metals. Uh, so it should minimize the corrosion that would occur to the aluminum tube in the future. It might make it easier to take apart if we ever need to. And now we can see the alignment of the cleat with the control line and its block.
And now for the other end cap. We'll rivet that into place. All that's left is to cut the control line to the right length. I leave a little bit extra to do a cleat hitch around the cleat. And just use a little bit more heat. Since I shortened my whisker pole, I decided to do one more step and paint a red line just to be a signal to me not to extend the pole any longer. Um, I wouldn't want to risk uh, overextending the pole and uh, having it buckle under load. Thanks for watching and please let me know if you have any questions or comments just put them below and I'll get back to you.